To understand type 1 error, you need to really uh, recap what a hypothesis test is in the first place. Okay, you are uh, making some kind of claim or hypothesis or suggesting that something has changed, that something doesn't fit in to a population, um, something's not right. Okay, and you are usually taking a sample to see whether that is true. Okay, and you're only ever going to be a certain percentage certain that you're correct. Okay, and there are always times where you take a sample and the the data shows uh, leads you to a conclusion in one direction, uh, but just so happens that the data that you selected uh, was misleading and just by chance it showed you the wrong conclusion. Okay, so um, whether you accepted the null hypothesis uh, or rejected it, okay, and whether which one is wrong or not depends on uh, that, well that tells you whether it's type 1 or type 2 error. Okay, the null hypothesis in general is uh, is the the status quo, the um, the hypothesis that what was previously thought remains to be true. Okay, that that nothing has really changed. Okay, and the alternate hypothesis is the opposite. Okay, is the hypothesis that your your sample doesn't fit in. Okay, that something has changed. That the claim that something is out of the ordinary has proven to be correct um, or at least we think um, okay but this is where significance levels come into it okay you are never going to be a hundred percent certain um, but you need to you need to kind of make the cutoff uh, somewhere and that is what the significance level is there for so you can decide how certain you have to be um, about accepting a certain hypothesis uh, for you to do it. Now that also tells us um, how likely we are to make an error. Okay, If we are slightly more relaxed with our significance level, clearly um, we might be more prone to make an error in our hypothesis testing. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples about how to find the probability of type 1 error. And type 1 error is when you reject the null hypothesis, okay, even though in reality you shouldn't have. Okay, you took a sample, you found some data that was out of the ordinary, let's say, and you were led to believe that this data truly is out of the ordinary where actually it was just the sample that you got um, sort of coincidentally showed that and really there's if you were to do the test 100 more times you would see that really you shouldn't have uh, rejected the null at all okay that is a type 1 error okay now with uh, continuous data such as in a normal distribution okay or when you're uh, taking a big sample and you apply the central limit theorem it becomes um, those sample means become normally distributed uh, the probability of type 1 error equals the significance level okay that is not just by chance that is almost because they are the same thing okay I've got in my first example here uh, that uh, I'm testing whether European basketball players are shorter than NBA basketball players. Okay, I'm looking at the heights of uh, 100 European basketball players and I'm comparing it to the NBA mean of 205 centimeters with variance 26 with a significance level of 5% for this test. Okay, this is normally distributed even if the original data individually was not okay because I have because I'm looking at a mean of a hundred players. Okay.
okay, which is more than 30, obviously. Okay, so my alternate hypothesis is that um, the mean is less than 2 root 5. And, well, the significance level here is um, the percentage of uncertainty, almost, that I'm allowing in this test. Um, and what it's saying is, if you get an average height that's this low, then, well, there's a less than 5% chance that that could just occur by chance. Now, that is basically the same thing as the type 1 error in the first place. Okay, that's finding the data just by chance, even though it fundamentally shouldn't be like that. Okay, so hopefully you see there how those are essentially the same things and that the probability of type 1 error here would just be 5%. Okay, but mainly because this is continuous data. Okay, there is an exact or uh, an accurate enough height that is that gives you this 5% level. Okay, whereas discrete data, as we're going to see, uh, can get a little bit more complicated because there is no exact value that can give you the 5% exactly. Uh, let's see what I mean by that. Okay, let's say I've got a football team that scores goals at a Poisson distributed rate of 1.7 goals per game then we apply new tactics to the team and we're trying to uh, test whether their attack has improved, whether they are scoring more goals now. We measure them over the course of five games. We count the goals they score. Uh, again, we're going to use a significance level of 5%. Okay, and if I change the distribution uh, to Y to be regarding five games, then the mean should be 8.5 goals, okay? And surely, you know, if they scored nine goals, then there wouldn't be enough information to tell you that it really has improved. But 10, 11, 12, um, then we're not sure. So we can use Poisson CDF to figure out uh, how high how many goals do they need to score to convince us that truly um, the team's attack has improved? Okay, and we are going to wait until the Poisson CDF tells us a value of less than 5%. Okay, so if I do it with 8.5 and lower bound 12, upper bound I number, whatever you want to use. Uh, we get personal CDF when our calculator tells us 0 0.151. Okay, there's a 15% chance that a team would just score 12 or more goals uh, just naturally on any uh, five game stretch. Okay, so that's not unlikely enough to give us our critical region. Okay, uh, let's try another one then. Okay, 15% is, is quite far off. So I'm going to jump to and have a look at 14. Okay, what's the probability of scoring 14 or more goals uh, under these circumstances, uh, under the previous circumstances, we should say? And that's 5.14%. That's still not five. Um, so that's still not less than five. So surely 15 or more will do it, and indeed on our calculator we see 2.74%. Now that tells us that there's a 2.74% chance of uh, a team under these conditions of where they're meant to score 8.5 goals every five games, uh, of them scoring 15 or more. Now that is the critical region, 15 or more, okay, and even though the significance level was meant to be 5%, um, there's, this is almost the highest the significance level really can be, okay, because there is no 14.1 goals, 
that doesn't exist, this is discrete data. And therefore, the critical region is 15 or more, and really the significance level is more like 2.74%. Okay, but that is important to note because that's also going to be the type 1 error. Okay, the type 1 error being uh, what are the chances of um, just making an error and just by chance seeing a very prolific uh, five game stretch where they score lots of goals but really if we look to the next 10 games after that uh, we would see quite clearly that it hasn't really improved uh, that something else was going on maybe they were just going up against weaker defenses or just getting lucky who knows okay but there's a 2.74 percent chance of that just happening uh, and that would be a type 1 error if that happened and therefore that's the probability of type 1 error okay and the opposite way around will be type 2 error and that will be in the next video.